So we want to welcome you. Thank you so much for coming out. The room is full, so that's exciting for us to see. Once again, we've got everybody uh, here, and we filled the room with people that are interested in learning about global women's, learning about women in leadership roles, and really finding ways to take your careers to the next level. This is our fourth year, count them, four years. We are so blessed to have been able to get through the first four years, pull things together as nicely as we have, and to have this continued commitment from people like yourselves here consistently when we have our meetings and we get together. And I'm hoping that there's also conversation and dialogue happening in between the meetings. So when you've met people here, hopefully you're able to take that back to your credit <laughs> and keep that connection going. Because that's really where the proof is in the pudding, where the rubber meets the road, whatever cliche you want to attach to that, that's really where you're going to get the most value out of these meetings and the interaction, is to take what you what you learn here back, but also the people that you meet and those connections that you make here. So we have uh, some breakfast over here. If you haven't already enjoyed that, feel free to step out and do uh, you know a little breakfast. The restrooms are out in the hallway if you need that. We have a really, really full agenda today. We have a CEO panel for you. Some of the CEOs are here in the room with us, and we have a CEO in Pittsburgh with Lori. And we also have Patsy Van Auerkirk. She's here from the World Council of Credit Unions. So we're so excited. After four years, we have been able to get someone from World Council here to speak with us about that connection, what takes the PA Sister Society and connects us up with World Council and what global women's are doing across the entire universe, across the globe. So very excited to hear from Patsy on that. Thank you to our sponsors today. We'll hit on that a little bit later on, too. Well, thank you. I don't have a whole lot to say today other than, you know, we're all, CUNY Mutual is always, you know, very willing and very proud to sponsor the events of the Global Women's Leadership Network. Um, back in Madison, Wisconsin, we, you know, we have about 3,200 employees back there and have very large Global Women's Leadership Network group back there. Very much focused on sales leaders, wealth management women leaders, and also women in technology. So very much focused on, you know, um, diversity and pay equity and doing everything we can to promote women in the industry. Again, very proud to support um, the industry as a whole. You know, Kin Mutual does a lot on the advocacy side, um, regulations, and also financial support back to the industry in order to um, continue to make everybody relevant and us to continue to be relevant. We very much appreciate your partnership. Um, you know, we very strong relationship with PCUA and again, very proud to um, be part of this group and to continue to sponsor um, so that we get some of the best speakers in here and very much looking forward to hearing Patsy today. So with that, I'll turn it over to Pam. Thanks, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here today, and I, I'm really excited to see all of you. Um, I didn't know that I had anything to say today, but <laughs> thank you, Amy. Um, my coworker, Carol Fastrich, is out in, in Pittsburgh, and Joanne is also here today. And of course, you all know Joanne. Um, there's a lot going on at PCUA that's very exciting, and stay tuned for some, some announcements about, about our future, as uh, I'm sure you know that we'll be uh, combining forces with the New Jersey Association effective January 1, so we've got some rebranding going on, a new name is forthcoming, and you should be hearing about that very soon. Um, uh, gosh, uh, all of the activities that that you're accustomed to will continue along with some new ideas and some refreshing of some programs and I hope you all come along for the ride. Uh, again, I'm, I'm excited to see you all here today. Particularly excited to see, uh, no offense to anyone in my age group, but all of you uh, young women professionals here today, um, very excited about that and um, thank you. Thanks very much. Patsy. So today we have the privilege to introduce Patsy Van Auerkirk. During her distinguished 44 years, Patsy helped shape the credit union industry as president and CEO of three progressive credit unions 
and on the board of directors of numerous boards and committees. Her past board services include Co-op Financial Services, the Filene Research Institute, Q's, Cuddle, and California Credit Union League. She is a founding member of the World Council of Credit Unions, Global Women Leadership Network. In 2002, Patsy was hired as president and CEO of Travis Credit Union, a state community charter located in Northern California. At that time, she was, the, oh, she was only the fourth woman in the country to run a billion dollar credit union. Under her leadership, Travis grew from $1.1 to $2.2 billion in assets and added 14 branches. Through her efforts, Travis was positioned as a strong community partner and committed to adding member value to financial initiatives geared towards youth and members of modest means. After retiring from Travis, Patsy joined Mitchell, Stankovic, and Associates and consults with credit unions on effective board governance, strategic planning, succession planning, and policy development. Her career as a CEO, and along with her years of credit union volunteer service, many as board chair, give her a unique and relevant perspective of the roles of board and management. She currently supports the industry as fundraising chair of the Global Women's Leadership Network and serves on the board of directors of the RMJ Foundation. She is passionate about the mission of credit unions and believes in giving back through her continued financial support and hands-on involvement. She believes in lifelong learning and after retiring, attended the Credit Union Development Education Training in Madison, Wisconsin. She became a DE in May 2016. Recently, at the Co-op's Think Conference, Patsy was presented with the organization's Founders Award, which is given to individual that holds, or which is giving to an individual that holds distinguished and dignified status in the credit union industry. In presenting the award, Alan McMorris, the board chair, recapped Patsy's career and said Patsy was a real pioneer as a female executive in the credit union industry. The growing number of women presidents, oh, her debt as diversity is so important to the success of the movement. Now that she's retired, Patsy and her husband John split their time between their homes in North Carolina and California. She loves to cook, travel, golf, and spend time with her seven nieces and great nieces and nephews. So with that, please welcome Patsy Van Auerkirk. I think you'll be able to hear me and I'm not going to need the heads up now if I'm not speaking loud enough. So I don't know how you all feel, but being called a pioneer maybe isn't flattering, but uh, I'm sorry for that long introduction, but I appreciate um, the opportunity to be with you today and I'm sorry that we're not connected to Pittsburgh, but I'm glad they'll be able to see this later on today. So thank you, Chris, again for the introduction. Um, I thoroughly enjoy representing the World Council at events like this. I've been involved with the World Council for a number of years, both as a CEO, but now as a volunteer. And so being at Sister Society meetings is very rewarding to me. Um, I helped launch a Sister Society meeting, a Sister Society group in Northern California earlier this year and also in North Carolina. Um, I got involved in the World Council um, back in the early 80s when I was in charge of training for an organization and I knew the World Council was our international trade association but I didn't know a lot more about them and so it was later that I got more um, active. Um, I do want to send regards today from Sue Mitchell who is the chair of the Global Women's Leadership Network. She's sorry she can't be with you today. I enjoy working with Sue both in this capacity and also uh, as one of her consultants. One of the things that <clears throat> is important to the World Council are our initiatives throughout the world and field engagements are one way that we do that. Anyone who is a member of the Global Women's Leadership Network or a supporter of the World Council of Credit Unions has the opportunity to participate. This photo is actually from 2007 when I had an opportunity to go to Beijing, China representing the World Council. We were there at the invitation of the Bank of China to see if credit unions might be a model for the rural cooperatives in that country. 
Uh, when you travel on a World Council engagement trip, you go at your own expense, or if you happen to be employed by a credit union, quite often the credit union will send their um, executives teams to that. One of the things that I was asked to do today is to try to help connect the World Council to Global Women's to the Sister Society. Um, simply put, the World Council's focus is on global reach and mission where the sister societies are really focused on making an impact in their local communities. Um, the World Council was actually started in 1971, as I said, as the International Trade Association. The mission is to improve the lives of credit unions and other financial cooperatives. We're not called credit unions around the world. Um, sometimes it's co-op in Africa, they're SACOs. But um, whatever we're called, the World Council tries to bridge that gap. Um, the vision is to expand financial inclusion throughout the global credit union community and believe that everyone should have access to affordable services. The uh, representation now is on six continents, 117 countries. There are over 89,000 credit unions that are members, 2.1 trillion in assets, and that's a penetration level throughout the world of 9.09%. The board of the World Council in 2014 committed to what was called Vision 2020. That campaign was to add 50 million new credit union members by 2020. That goal was exceeded in 2017. The board at that time said we need a new challenge and so Challenge 2025 is about implementing solutions using digital technology to connect everyone around the world. We're right now working with credit unions in the Philippines and in Indonesia about how to correct, connect women to e-commerce and payment solutions. The philanthropic arm of the World Council is the, World Council, the Worldwide Credit Union Foundation. Um, that's where Global Women fits in. We are under the umbrella of the foundation. The goal of the foundation is to do good, to do global good. There's a separate board of directors. The World Council has a 14-person board. They are representatives from all over the world. The current chair is Steve Staff, who is in um, Washington State. The foundation board is made up of nine individuals. Sue Mitchell is on that board, and she's our connection as Global Women Ambassadors to the foundation's board of directors. The World Council is seen as a bridge to connect credit unions globally and domestically. The strategy of the foundation is to be more than just a fundraising vehicle for credit unions. Um, the intent is to engage inside out, meaning we go to our current supporters like CUNA Mutual, like PSCU, like individuals such as myself, and ask them to do more, but also to reach out to individuals who may not currently be financially supporting the World Council. We want to make sure that we're aligning the organization's needs and making sure to add value. value. If a credit union wants to partner with someone in another part of the world, we can make that connection for them. We want to show impact. One of the things that we're really trying to do now is measure our impact around the world, especially in areas like uh, I was in Thailand last year, and we know that the business development centers that were started there uh, by the World Council of Credit Union through Global Women's, we've seen a 23% increase in the income level of those women. The pin that I have on, was made by those women. It's actually made of fish scales, very large fish, but they paint them, they dye them, they put the glitter on them, and sell them to tourists. And so by doing something as simple as that, or they're making scarves now, um, they're selling those, and that's how they're helping to improve their families and their communities. So we do want to measure and show impact, and we obviously want to say thank you to our sponsors. The foundation's work is divided into four key pillars, uh, credit union development worldwide, international disaster relief, a global engagement menu, and DEI, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion. And again, that's where global women fits in. The first pillar, global 
credit union development. I'll just mention a couple of examples. In Columbia, it was about accessibility. The goal there with this particular project was to make sure that anyone who needed access to financial services could be reached. And they are in very hard to reach areas um, of Colombia bordering Venezuela. The way that we were able to do that is individuals on motorbikes go out with handheld devices to these individuals to provide service. At the conclusion of this program, 250,000 Colombians had access to services. 105,000 of those had never had access to a financial institution. Another example is in Haiti, and the project there was about affordable housing. You'll remember the earthquake in 2010. Um, 300,000 residences, residents lost their homes. 100,000, 150,000 lost their lives. Um, with the um, work of the World Council and the credit unions that were there, we were able to help the Haitian colleagues set up pop-up branches, provide immediate aid, tent shelters, and so forth. That partnership with USAID resulted in housing being built for Haitians. Um, 10,000 families and individuals have new homes such as the one you see here in six different housing developments. Unfortunately, the second pillar is disaster relief and all too often we've had to um, provide disaster relief. In Northern California, it was the fires in Santa Rosa. In the Bahamas recently, we're providing support. Uh, Haiti, as I mentioned earlier. Um, this year at the World Credit Union Conference held in the Bahamas, a project storm break was started and it was to raise money to have available when needed. $100,000 was raised that night at a champion's reception. We're now at $182,000 and that money is being sent to the Bahamas to help the credit unions there get back on their feet so they can help their members. The uh, credit union located in Freeport was able to get back on their feet one week later and start providing financial services despite all the problems with the infrastructure. Um, executives from American Heritage Federal Credit Union in Philadelphia recently visited the Bahamas about two weeks ago on behalf of the World Council of Credit Unions to assess what the damages were and find out how the World Council could be more involved. Hit the wrong key. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll get through this very quickly and go back to where I should be. This is a, a photo of her at the wake of Hurricane um, Maria in 2017. The, the island of Dominica lost 90% of its GDP. Um, it was through the credit union system in partnership with the Indiana Credit Union League that rebuilt um, through consolidation. Since uh, 2006, $2 million has been generated from our global partners in response to international disaster relief. The third pillar is global engagement, and that is a toolkit of products, opportunities to help individuals and organizations support global credit union development. The first of those is a global good card. It's a visa card. Um, there's a case study with the credit union uh, in the Madison, Wisconsin, Summit Credit Union. Since offering this affinity card, they have issued 2,000 cards and $50,000 has been contributed to the World Council of Credit Unions. Their members indicating that they wanted to give money to help the global credit union cause. Another example um, is our monthly giving as individuals, as supporters, as sponsors. One dollar given here in the U.S. is equivalent to 50 in some of the countries that we're assisting. The champion contributions, we go to our credit union partners, our credit unions, our QSOs, and ask them to support local and global credit union development. Field engagement, I mentioned earlier, this was the photo taken last year of our delegation that went to Thailand and visited credit unions there and global women's leadership 
uh, network sister society meetings. This is where I got the pen at the Business Development Center. One way that we're trying to encourage credit unions to give to the World Council of Credit Unions is someone like myself when I retired, had we had this in place, my board could have said in recognition of your service, we'd like to send you on a project, on an engagement trip, but it's a great way to honor someone who is uh, currently or planning to leave um, the organization. The fourth pillar, which is where we come in, is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, you may have heard recently that the CUNA board has actually adopted a resolution as part of their operating principles that diversity, equity, and inclusion should as our part of what credit unions do each and every day. Our principles have guided us to fulfill that mandate and be a resource to all consumers. Um, Jim Nessel, who's the CUNA president, says, and we're committed to do more. It's really important that our credit unions and our industry partners recognize the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. One program under DEI is the World uh, YCUP, the World Young Credit Union Professionals. And this is designed to promote and engage the next generation of credit union leaders, those of us who are under 85. Are any of you members of YCUP? You ought to consider it as a great organization, and again, the programs are really to recognize those individuals who are com coming up and will be future credit union leaders. <coughs> this photo was taken in the Bahamas. These young individuals are receiving scholarships to the 2020 uh, World Credit Union Conference, which will be held in LA next July. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Global Le Women's Leadership Network. This photo was taken again in the Bahamas in July. Um, the vision, and you have it on your tables, is to provide women with the opportunity and resources to make a difference in each other's lives, the lives of members and their communities. Um, this idea actually came from Brian Branch, Dr. Brian Branch, who's the president of the World Council, in conversations of how to create a safe way for women to get together and talk about issues that were important and particular to them. He reached out to Sue Mitchell and asked if she would consider being the volunteer chair of the organization. She reached out to a number of the female CEOs at that time and said, will you become a founding member? And that's how we got started. So our goal now is really on sustaining the organization. We've done well in the first 10 years, but we have a long way to go to continue to sustain. The pink tie, or any sort of pink item, has become our um, brand. Um, in Asia, the Asian Confederation of Credit Unions have introduced pink scarves. Um, we have a lot of plans in place, but bow tie scarves, um, we keep talking about socks, it hasn't happened yet, but one of my primary responsibilities is uh, chairing the current fundraising committee and the idea of the pink tie came from one of our male colleagues. He says, why don't we sell swag? And so here we are. So each time you buy something pink, you're helping the organization. Um, you'll see in this photo, there are a lot of men there as well as women. Um, the He for She movement was created in Brazil. They have 22 sister societies. And we recognize that for women to succeed, we need our male colleagues to help. Um, many individuals report to men supervisors or men CEOs and it's important that they understand that we do have some unique issues um, and so it's important that we have men and women part of the network. We're the industry's only international platform dedicated to addressing and facilitating greater gender bias among leadership positions. So why is the impact so important? Uh, 1.7 billion adults remain unbanked without an account at a financial institution. 56% of those are women. Globally, about 1.1 billion, or two-thirds of all unbanked adults, have a mobile phone, but that percentage is lower for women. Globally, 44% of all credit union members are women. 27.5% of board members are women globally. 
15% of credit unions are led by women globally. So we're trying to do more to help women advance in their careers. We know in the United States that 25% of women unbanked are immigrants like, uh, and they cite a lack of trust for why they have not come to a financial institution. This photo was taken at a World Council um, conference at a reception when the Global Women's Leadership Network was honored by the World Council's Distinguished Service Award by receiving that. Sue Mitchell received it on, on behalf of the organization. Again, our vision is to make a difference in the lives of women by providing an opportunity through the World Council of Credit Unions. This was our first forum back in 2009 in Barcelona. I wasn't able to attend this particular forum, but each year with the Credit Union Conference, we have a forum specifically for women and the members of YCUP to have speakers and have sessions that are particular to us. We now call that our DEI track. I mentioned next year's conference is in uh, LA. Uh, we plan a major golf tournament, fundraising tournament. Um, my first exposure to the forum was the year 2010 when I chaired the golf tournament in Las Vegas. So um, I've been doing fundraising now for a while for global women. This photo is the one you saw earlier, but what's so nice in this photo, as I said, from the one in 2009, the number of people who are participating and how many of our male co uh, colleagues are in the group. So what's a sister society? Um, local chapters of the Global Women's Leadership Network, like the Pennsylvania Sister Society, there to help us promote the global mission of the World Council and make a difference locally. They're an extension of the World Council and they raise awareness about the World Council's work, which is the reason that I was asked today to talk to you not just about sister societies or global women, but also about the World Council of Credit Unions and how we fit in and how you fit in to a much larger organization. We want to support local community efforts and serve as a platform to discuss credit union issues and foster solutions to the problems that we're experiencing. Um, the first sister society was actually started in California. Um, it came as a result of a board member, uh, the chair of Patelco Credit Union, who happens to be a woman, being at a World Council forum. And she said not everybody can attend a credit union conference that's held throughout the world. What can we do locally? And so from that idea, sister societies were born. And so in, um, the first one was started by that board member and Sue Mitchell, myself, a number of us have gone on to help raise awareness and to create more sister societies. That first one was started in 2012. Today we have 100 and are still growing. So our numbers, um, as I mentioned, 100 sister societies, 21 countries. Some of the things that the sister societies are doing are donating clothing, helping families, uh, emerging leadership programs, building credit union awareness, social mission with younger consumers, localizing the impact, and doing good, good globally. 57 scholarships to women from 23 countries have been awarded, six in 2019. Our goal is to increase that number by 10 for 2020. 2,600 people, both men and women, are now members of the Global Women's Leadership Network from 78 different countries. It's because of the growth of the sister societies that the network is growing. We've seen, as I mentioned earlier, a 23% increase for women in Asia who are part of the business development centers. We've raised, since 2009, $2.5 million by picking up the phone and calling our business partners and asking individuals to support by selling pink ties, by being a member of the Global Women's Leadership Network. We are trying to advance women in leadership and having both men and women unite for that cause. And then in 2019, just earlier this year, we launched our mobile app. So that's going to allow us to connect women throughout the world who have, to have access to a phone that cannot be um, accessed today. This is just a, a, a map showing our reach into 21 countries 
and in the United and in the United States. There you go, in the United States. And you'll see Pennsylvania is part of that. One of our newest sister societies is in Nepal, and this is a meeting that they were holding recently. How you can be involved is to support the Global Women's Leadership Network in a number of different ways, and it will mean something different to each individual. Um, advancing women might mean helping young women succeed in their careers to some of you in this room. It might be helping someone in the local community through your Dress Success for Success program. In Nepal, it's about feeding a family. Or in Brazil, it's about the status of women who are really unrecognized within that society. In the U.S., it's helping women who are in smaller credit unions advance to larger credit union positions, um, to more diversity in the boardroom, and creating opportunities for our new le leaders. Throughout the world, the sister societies are responding to these issues in respect to whatever it is that they are focusing on. And I was really glad to get a press release earlier this year from your sister society uh, about the work you're doing with the Milagro House and also with your Dress for Success program. So both of those, um, when I was first talking to Amy and Lori, I was very impressed with. Um, you are unique in sister societies in that you have more of a structure. You have a committee for membership and education and community involvement. So that's a message that we'll be taking back to the sister society strategy meeting being held in November. So you really are a leader in how you have put this together to encourage participation, but as Amy was saying last night, to help some of the younger women in our credit unions advance into leadership positions within the Global Women's Leadership Network. So very, very proud to have been here with you and be able to go back and Amy for her to be able to share that uh, when we're together in November. We are challenging you today for the individuals who will come behind you. Um, as I mentioned, our focus now is on sustainability. Uh, we're collecting data. We want to be able to make a measurable difference. Um, Lena, who is our program director in Madison, recently sent out a video to the sister society leaders. The goal was to raise dollars to fund two global women's leadership memberships within each sister society. The membership is $250, which gives you unlimited access to a number of resources, which I will mention in just a few minutes. Um, in Oklahoma, they um, just put a basket out at each of their meetings and ask people to put in change or, or small bills. In Iowa, they did a dress down day and contributed $2,300 to the Global Women's Leadership Network. So it's really up to each sister society. My sister society meeting that will be in Sacramento later this year, we're just gonna ask people to make contributions to fund a membership. That's one of the ways that we grow. International Credit Union Day is coming up. Um, the theme this year on October 17th is local service, global reach. The graphics are pretty cute. It shows four individuals holding up the world. Um, <clears throat> we're hoping that sister societies might, within their respective areas, do something for International Credit Union Day around our global um, reach. But ways that you can get involved, using the mobile app to join, bringing a friend to a meeting such as this, participating in events, I'm gonna to mention to a few, traveling out in the field, and those can be worldwide engagements or they can be engagements here in the US, donating, as I mentioned, to our 10th anniversary. The app is really a game changer for us. Um, it only takes one person to make a difference, and at the governmental affairs breakfast that we had this year in February for Global Women's Leadership Network, an individual from Elevations Credit Union, the chief information officer, was there with his board chair, and he said, what could we do? How could we make a difference? And they decided that they would create this app, and they hired interns to do it at their credit union. They worked on it for a number of months, and we were able to roll it out earlier this year. So you can go on to the app, find out where meetings are being held, you can look at press releases, you can do your registration, you can order your pink swag. So the app is really a, a great tool for us.
You can invite someone to a sister society meeting with you. As you know, sister society uh, meetings, we do not charge. We thank our sponsors providing lunch, uh, breakfast, facilities. Uh, we enjoy the fact that our credit unions like to step up and host these events. So without that sort of support, we would not be successful. But do invite someone to attend. This photo is actually from the International Sister Society meeting from the Bahamas in July. A couple of events that I wanted to draw to your attention. Um, the Executive Readiness, Readiness Summit is a workshop designed for women who are in mid to um, high tiered positions. It's going to be held this year in Phoenix, November 4th through 6th. It's a three-day program, and it really is about developing the skills that you need to be a member of the C-suite. Another that I'll mention, uh, the strategy session that we're reaching out to our sister society leaders, asking them if they will come to Phoenix and participate in a one-day strategy session. And that's where we exchange information about what's working in the sister societies, and that's where we will have the perfect setting to talk about the structure that you have here and how it has really led to your success, as well as the enthusiasm of your leaders. And then an engagement program whoop, that's coming up. Um, I mentioned engagement programs, and there's one coming up in December to Kenya where we have for a number of years supported an orphanage there. Uh, next year, I know there are two engagement programs in Croatia, but these are great opportunities, again, to recognize someone for their service to their organization or if you individually wanted to make a difference I will tell you they're life changing anyone who's gone on a field engagement trip has come back saying it really made me understand how I fit into a much bigger picture and what sort of need there really is out in out in the world the World Council always makes sure that in addition to sharing all the ideas you have an opportunity to also, um, is my um, finger keep doing that? You have an opportunity to experience the country. So while we were in Thailand last year, we were able to go to a play. We were able to go see one of the beach communities. So they make sure that you're not just going there to do just work, but you have a chance to experience the country. These are photos from Thailand from last year. Um, we were treated like royalty. The organizations that asked us to come in and speak had interpreters so that we were able to communicate well. Um, we had a chance to see what the business development centers were doing. A number of the credit union members who had small businesses were able to come to, come to a lunch one day and make their um, items available for us to buy. It was a, a wonderful experience and, and well worth the time. We are um, actively working on fundraising. Um, this is just a chart that shows the different ways that the foundation reaches out to organizations. Uh, we have a priority fund. It's like a general fund. Um, and that's where some of our initiatives um, fall under. The Global Women's Leadership Network, we're at about 85% of our goal for this year. The Global Classroom is where credit unions here in the U.S. exchange ideas with credit unions from around the world, us traveling there or them traveling here. YCUP, I mentioned, is an organization to bring up our emerging leaders. And Project Stormbreak, which I also mentioned, um, we are doing very well in raising the funds to have available. The whole idea of this when we were in the Bahamas was to have money available before we had a disaster. And little did we know then that we would be turning around just two months later and providing those funds to the Bahamas. Um, it's partners, like as I said, that have been with us from the beginning, like CUNA Mutual, PSCU, who is a sponsor from the sister society, for the sister societies, has been with us from day one. The co-op network just committed $500,000 over the next 10 years to help with the sustainability that I mentioned. So our goals and campaigns really are about making sure this organization continues to grow and be successful in the future. Um, I mentioned tying on your pink, wearing your pink. 
Um, anytime we sell an item, it's helping promote our brand and promote our vision. Um, Brian talks about being out in the world. Everywhere he goes, he sees a sea of pink in the room and how rewarding it is to see his vision come to life. There are different ways to connect with us. Um, the World Council's website um, is a wonderful way to go and look at all the projects that are going on. Things like uh, a project that we have now, we're working with the um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on a small technology project or through a small grant to talk about technology in Indonesia um, and in the Philippines. But the World Council's website will talk about all the projects. You can look at the different pillars that I mentioned. You can look at the Global Women's Leadership Network as an organization and what we do. Um, you can connect on Twitter, LinkedIn, or YouTube. Um, and also, certainly, I would say the Facebook page for the Global Women's Leadership Network is very powerful. You can see what the women's groups are doing, the chapters are doing around the world. Um, and it's particularly rewarding to see one launch uh, somewhere, somewhere in the world after you've had a chance to meet and interact with that individual. Um, I saw something recently, it said diversity is having a seat at the table, inclusion is having a voice, and belonging is having that voice be heard. And to me, that's really what the Global Women's Leadership Network is about. It's promoting diversity and inclusion and making sure to have a voice and to be heard. And we think the Global Women's Leadership Network is certainly one way to do that. Um, there was a recent Facebook post from a young woman, Mercy, um, who is from Kenya, and she said she looked around the Sister Society meeting and wrote, I call them game changers, women of substance, powerful, women ready to learn and explore every opportunity to make their lives better. Our time to shine as women of substance is now. Let's inspire, connect, and empower, which again is the mission of the organization. So with that, um, trying to rush through a little to have time to answer some questions that you might have. I know that we won't have the opportunity with Pittsburgh to do that, but would certainly take a few minutes and welcome questions. I know we want to stay on track, so uh, we're not going to do but a few questions. But anyone have a question? I understand you'll be getting uh, the presentation, so you'll have a chance to look at the slides later. I saw some of you taking photos. Um, but if you have more curiosity about the World Council, please go to the website. Um, every press release that's been done about all the projects is, are, is there for your review. So, any questions that I can answer for you? Understand where you fit in? Yes. Uh, Patsy, I took uh, a couple of notes on the uh, numbers that you quoted us on uh, just people unidentified and gender identified and then um, just the fact that there's a lot of cell phones. It's just really interesting to see that statistic. Isn't it? And that correlation. And we're finding, again, so many people around the world have a cell phone if they don't have anything else. And we really have found that's the way to reach them with financial services. I mean, who would have thought? I never thought I would pay a bill by phone. I never thought my phone would become my watch. Um, but, you know, so it really is, we've found, and especially areas like Columbia, we're just taking a phone to these rural areas. Of course, sometimes access is an issue. Technology is always a problem in my mind. But... Uh, Julie would agree, but um, it is something that we know that's a way to reach people. But the percentage of women is less that have, that have cell phones. Any other thoughts? Yes? So you talked about the importance of involving our male colleagues, and we just had a conversation about this yesterday, and we haven't really, as a sister society, been intentional about inviting men in, so do you have any suggestions for that? We asked, um, when we launched the Sacramento Area Sister Society earlier this year, we've had um, three meetings. And we asked after that first meeting that everyone tried to bring someone with them, and if at all possible, one of their male colleagues. And we've also, um, our CEO group gets together in Sacramento once a month for lunch. So as a retired CEO, they still welcome me. And so I went and talked to them about global women's and about sister societies and lined up several of them to sponsor future sister society meetings, to be the host. 
And so I think there are a couple of ways. Certainly Amy could reach out to her male counterparts, encourage involvement, but a lot of it is those of you in the room who want to invite a male colleague to attend. The idea, it's never been about men bashing. It's always about helping everyone move forward, men and women. <clears throat> but women quite often have not had the same opportunities to network as the men who are um, many in CEO roles. So again, it's about being inclusive and making sure there's equity and not at all about excluding. So in my career, I did a lot of work with mentoring and trying to help women and men succeed. And the last thing we would want to do is to make the men colleagues in our credit unions feel that they aren't welcomed and unappreciated because it will take them to help women succeed. Any other questions or thoughts? Patsy, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the Readiness Summit. I know it's coming up here in November, but do you know, is it going to be offered again next year and how frequent and are there some scholarships available that might help people get there? The, um, it's being offered um, every year. It's typically in November. I think last year it was in Chicago. This is only our second year offering it. Um, it really came out of a group of women CEOs talking about how do we get our individuals ready to move up. And so that's where the idea was born from. Um, it starts out with a reception one evening and the next day is hands-on. Um, there's a, this year there's a four-week online course that's available, uh, a leadership academy after the session, so anyone that attends receives that complimentary. Uh, I don't know about scholarships for it. I will go back and ask um, how we might make that work. It's $1,100 per person, and that includes the three-day program. So, but it, it, it will be offered each year, and it is about, again, building the skills necessary to be a leader in an organization. It sounds like a great program. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some women in the room would, would enjoy it. And again, it's one that you can go online and take a look at, and we can certainly, I can make sure to get Amy more detailed information about it to send out, but it will be held, and then the last day of it, we will bring together the sister society leaders so that everyone will have the chance to interact. So as the, as the readiness summit is concluding, the sister society group will come in so we have a chance to have that reception, uh, that networking opportunity. The women who have attended have said it's been very valuable. That what skills are needed to advance in organizations. Thanks for asking that, Amy. Anything else? I hope that um, you understand that what you're doing makes a difference here. It makes a difference to the Global Women's Leadership Network and in turn makes a difference to the World Council of Credit Unions. It allows the World Council to continue to focus on projects throughout the world and not to take away from the fact that we do projects here in the U.S. One of our engagement projects was actually in Ventura County and it was with migrant farm, farm workers. And the way that we determined to reach them was by cell phones. Individuals going out from the credit union with cell phones to help them with their financial needs while they were um, in the fields. So there are all sorts of ways to get involved as a volunteer like myself, as a member of Global Women. I'd encourage you to check it out. And if you have an interest in joining, talk with your supervisors, managers, or um, approve yourself a membership. It's only $250 a year. I mentioned to a couple of people that there are many individuals like myself who will offer scholarships or offer memberships so that they can, you can get involved. So there are a number of us that still do that if someone has a keen interest in joining and not the financial wherewithal. Um, there's a way to get you connected. But do check out, um, follow us on Facebook. Um, Global Women's Leadership Network is a closed platform, so you do have to um, join the network in order to participate in the, um, some of the information. But do check us out and check out the World Council of Credit Unions. And again, Amy, thank you for inviting me to be here today. And again, from Brian Branch and Sue Mitchell, they send their regards. And Brian recently sent out a video message to the sister societies and Amy and Lori were the first to receive it. He was so impressed with the work that's being done here. So it's a real testament to you and what you've done. So thanks again. Okay, so at this point we are going to take a moment to get a group photo.
photo. So does anybody know who's going to do our group photo? Connie. Okay. So lobby at the stairs. Lobby upstairs before at the Okay. Lobby upstairs. Will you form, put us on the stairs? Is that is that the plan? On the actual stairs. Yeah. Okay. We get more people on the stairs that way. Well, and then we show can most see people. Too, yeah. So we'll head up and take our group photo for the day, and then come back down for the next <coughs> of the program. Nice, my voice fell out.